rain, rain, and more rain. But anyway, that's not the subject for today. Tech Rabbit here. Keycap cleaning. Um, let's take a look. So, anyway, here's the keyboard, and before we start, it should be disassembled. So, back plate off, control, or keyboard controller off, and, and the membrane should be removed. And then one should reserve some some useful tins for putting the individual components in. Because we're going to actually end up with three different components here. We're going to have to actually um, have the actual um, keypad, and then we're going to have the foot, and then we're going to have the spring. Um, but yeah, I have to make sure they stay together. And um, one useful tool to actually acquire also is this... Um, key extract key um, extractor and basically it has two ends so one is for actually pulling the key caps so this kind of springy thing here and then the other end is actually revered uh, used for pulling switches but this doesn't have switches so this this end of the tool is not relevant but it's it's a kind of a combo tools and um, just going to demonstrate how we progress so I'm not going to show every single key because my intention is to actually pull every every key cap there is but there's no point in filming that because it's a repeated process so and then we pulled the first key and they can be on quite hard oh, the spring got caught in the, <laughs> in the tool so here you go, you got a keycap, and um, this is usually where the 30 years of dirt gathers, it's, it's here inside the keycap and then on the base around there can be also accidents with coffee and, and soft drinks and stuff over the years. So that's why I, prob I suggest that one should actually do a deep clean of the keycaps and base and then you actually end up with the foot also, the feet part, foot part. And um, so, we can use this to continue. And it's actually relatively difficult to pull these um, keys if one hasn't got the tool. And one risks um, breaking, the f breaking, most of one risks breaking that pedestal there. Or one risks um, damaging the insert into the foot. So it's actually very good to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out the different parts into the different containers as I progress through. Now, when it comes to the spacebar one, I will probably. Um, once I get there, then I'll come back and show it. Because this has a spring spring mechanism underneath it, and it's actually um, relatively easy to damage that. So my suggestion is that we take all like all the small keys off first, and then one can address the more larger ones. Because of course, the, for example, the return key is also a special case because you can't really use this tool. Uh, also useful hint, take a photograph of the keyboard layout and watch out the keys don't fly all over the place. <laughs> like in that instant. So, but they, interestingly the um, spring caught into the tool. Well, now I need to find the keycap. But anyway, I'm going to progress and remove all the, all the keys that are that size and then I'll be back. So oh, now we've progressed a bit and I um, just wanted to indicate when I'm talking about um, dirt underneath the keycaps as you see there's lint here and, and there and um, even, oh wow, uh, quite a lot. So you, you know, that that's, you know, 30 years of not cleaning. <laughs> so now we stripped it down, all the standard buttons that only have the button cap and the spring and the 
food on it and then we just left the more specialized <coughs> as you see there's a lot of a lot of crap caught underneath the keys uh, I mean some of these can cause functional problems also but anyway let's get into the more special keys now so let's have a look at some of these special keys so I already removed this enter key and just want to show what the big deal is the, the deal is that those special keys have, have this kind of supporting bar that enables the key to stay straight when you're pressing it. And it's got the same spring things. So when you're taking these out, you don't want to just rip it directly out because then um, you're liable to um, destroy these or the connections on, on the keyboard. So you need to be extremely careful when lifting it. Oops, and you really, really just need to make sure that you don't jerk it too much violently. And you take the spring out, and then you need to work very carefully, and I suggest using a, um, and then of course it has the foot ones. Uh, and you need to work very carefully with I suggest using a magnifying glass to actually push this bar out without breaking the tabs. So that's what I'm going to do with each one of these special keys, taking care not to ruin anything. And the enter key, it actually has two bars, so one has to take a bit care, more care with this one. <laughs> yeah, just look at that. That's what's hiding underneath unclean keycaps. So, another interesting finding. Since it's supposed to have two springs, one on there, or actually three, one in the center for the actual switch, and then there should be one here. And this is gone. Probably work okay anyway. So, that's all the keys removed. So then, basically a quick summary of cleaning. This will be soap and water soap and water, contact cleaner and rinse off with water and immediate drying, same here, contact cleaner, swell them around and then uh, water and then immediate drying and then uh, soapy water and mechanically also to check um, that there isn't any dust left um, in the um, different parts. Oh, I'll just take a brush and soapy water and then just wash that whole thing down. That'll be fine. Oh, I'll just take a brush and soapy water and then just wash that whole thing down. That'll be fine. So, keycaps nest next. Hot water and this part. Already getting really good. And then they have to be a little bit individually looked at manually. Check there's no dirt left on it. And they can actually stand there soaking for a while. Not, but those with sharp eyes would have noticed that where those. Where are this um, spring thing goes around and goes into those white pieces actually lubricated so we're gonna have to actually return the lubrication. So the springs that will be a bit of contact cleaner. And this is to take care of any other sides and other crap that's on. And then we're just going to rinse them off in water and dry them quick. These are the feet so same process. And again, the idea is to get rid of all the, ox the oxidity on the So I need to take the bag out of this one and see what we can find. So, the inspection tables, outside, some gloves. And I would like to keep this bag, but it's not really used up. 
one by, let's see. Through the whole back. And, um, no springs yet. The one I did find. Yeah. And then I found some other stuff, but we're not worried. It's the keyboard. That's right. Apart from my table, and this I think is something I took off the device. It's probably not really it. See if the um wind will help us clear some of this dust over time. Let's see. Well, I'm a bit out of hope for finding springs. So all done. So now we just let it um. As you see, it needs to dry properly, and then of course there'll always be water trapped in some of these. So. Then I have to individually go through uh, each of these with a piece of paper, check if there's any lint caught somewhere or extra dirt or that wasn't caught in the general cleanings. Be back when that's done. Now, if you're in a hurry, you can just um, spread them out on, on the absorbing paper. It um, helps them dry faster. So, all parts are now dry and clean. So um, the assembly order is pretty much the reverse. Now we start with all these that have this kind of bar um, in it. Because you really need the space to be able to put the bar back. And then um, this also needs a little bit of lubrication. And then it's all the normal keys and then here's the feet and all the springs. Oh, now we're ready to put it together and I suggest we start with the return or entry key and um, as I was talking about the lubrication so usually I use this white lithium grease and a very little amount and then it's gonna, I won't spray here because I don't want it on this stuff so I have to put it on the side but you just spray a little tiny bit into each of these areas so that they get those tracks get lubricated and the as i said the first key that i recommend the first key to put in is the enter because you need so much space to to get these bars in place so that's all the buttons with bars installed lubricated so right on this side and um it's, it's a bit fiddly putting in the 
springs and stuff, but I, I, um, when I'm pressing it from the other side, I try and use my, oh, I wonder if, if I can even show it, I use my nails and I press on, on the plastic, not on the contact pad. So just put it, oh, I can't do it now, like putting your fingernail like that and then pushing it down into the keycaps. So then it, um, all the pressure is on the plastic and not, not on the contact pad. And um, now it's just to go through and um, install the um, rest of the keys. And remember there's a few, there's a white one and a blue one, and if you watch my video you'll see where those go. So there's two, two um, pads that are, or feet that are not the same. So, be back when this is done. Well, a bit fiddly, but um, getting there slowly. So, anyway, um, some good news and some bad news. Um, the good news is that I've yeah, put all the caps on now. Except that now I found out that I've lost potentially three springs. And actually this is a little bit debatable because it depends if this spring here is a smaller spring or a larger spring because I found two small springs and um, the issue is that do they belong to the space bar? So does the space bar actually from manufacturing actually have two small springs and then this uses a small spring? So then it would mean that the space bar was missing a spring already original. But these are definitely, <laughs> they've lost uh, somewhere. And actually, it was originally there was three missing spr springs. And I um, looked everywhere and I couldn't find anything. And then uh, suddenly my wife came with a spring and says, is this yours? And I said, oh yeah, where did you find it? And I said, in the uh, washing machine. <laughs> so then I kind of like gave up the probability of finding them is, um, is probably very limited. So um, the steps is that I'm actually going to acquire uh, from the usual sources a, key, uh, a defunct keyboard so I can actually take parts from. But first I'm going to actually, um, to be able to move ahead with this project, I'm going to actually take uh, another pending project, which is another, uh, it's an Amiga 500 plus, and I'm going to borrow the springs from that. Um, just to get this one up and running and then I'm, yeah, in parallel going to acquire more more keyboard parts. Um, so, let's have a look at that. And that's also to answer the questions that does the spacebar have two springs and then does this one use a small spring? So I can get those questions answered also at the same time. So anyway, here's my Omega 500 Plus project. Um, yeah, purchased this untested, so I have no idea if this works. But anyway, I cheated a bit and I already loosened the space bar, so, so I'm going to try and show what it looks like underneath. Let's see if I can get it into focus. And here we actually see the same thing that. It only has one sp one small spring, and then it's got the big spring for the actual leg, or the actual action part. And yeah, and there is no no spring here, so it seems like um, this small spring I I'm going to take out of the one that I'm working on, and, and that will go go um, because I'm assuming that this here has a small spring on it, so. Um, I can't remember if it does, so we're going to pull that and um, check. And as you saw, the this keyboard is also extremely dirty, so I'm probably going to end up doing the same same um, key capping and cleaning process for this one, ultimately. So confusion reigns. Um, looks like that actually has a big big spring. So the Two small springs that I found should belong here, but why does this one have a missing spring then? So let's pull the missing ones out and get that one fixed. So it's B we need to pull. Oh, not blue. 
boost the spring. Just there. And it was that one. Three. And as I said, I'll be pulling the caps off this anyway. So it really needs to be clipped. So, anyway. Um, now we have three big springs, and that's for that one, that one, that one, and then we still have the mystery as to why my unit only had one. Oh, well, actually it's turned out that it has two, and then when I took this one out, then it only had one. Hm. Very strange, but, um, yeah. Okay. Man, these springs are tricky. Look what I found on the floor. So that was coming out of here. I want to to be so careful when taking these apart. I thought I would take as, a, as an educational pick that when one's actually disassembling this one really, really has to make sure the springs don't fly away. Oh, starting to get really hot again, so I'll put the air conditioning on. But anyway, last, um, last button. And then this is the one which has the blue foot, so on. Um, Remember, still, that's the that's for this one here. So, just get that on and then we'll be done. So, that's all the um, keys in place again. Nice, clean, nice, clean um, keyboard now. So, now it's time to um, consider putting the membrane back, but um, Murphy's Law. You see this one? It should have a lead there, and that's missing. <laughs> and um, sadly, I think I know exactly where it is because something small and red disappeared into the vacuum cleaner um, when I was actually cleaning up in this area. So I think I know what I have to <laughs> do now. <laughs> found it as I showed and then there was one more one more piece and that's this pad I actually put the lead through this pad and then the pad sits down there and then those are two conductive softer which then um, uh, contact with the membrane so I had to go back into the dust and find that little part but now it's there it should be no, we're, and that's the only one that has a light on it, as far as I can remember. Um, yeah, as far as I... Yeah, no, that's the only one that has any kind of a light on it, so now that should be ready to go. So, next stage is to get the um, membrane back in place. Let's just do it quick. Check, we have the lead in place and the white button the blue button and then everything else seems to be in place so we can expose the membrane it's cleaned up in a previous video and then it's the side with all the black dots position into place. So it's the membrane in place. And then we have to um put the back plate on. So back plate. Well, that looks like it's flat and good in position. Can take this relatively heavy metal piece and try not to bang it around. And we make sure that it's in its location with its location times coming through. So now we need to put all these tiny little screws back. And all these little holes. So that's all these shorter um, small screws in this place. And now we're going to put in the keyboard controller and it uses these slightly longer small screws. So I'll try not to mix them up and there's three of these longer screws. So um keyboard controller 
Very important protective piece of plastic. I'm gonna have to put another tie tie on the cable, and then we have the screws. So let's get this installed. So let's put the wire underneath here. Like that. And then we need to make sure that this lock is open. So that means to push this forward here. First one, and then we need to put the protective plastic on. Oh, I think it goes round. Oh, yeah. No. So, that's that in place. So, let's see if we can lock this. cable like it was before and then we're done so the last thing we need to do is to tie back the cable Um, 
keycap, deep clean and keyboard assembly. So done. So if you want to see this being put to use, then um, consider subscribing and um, hit the bell icon to be notified when videos go out. And um, yeah, hopefully this will work. See you in the next one.